Okay, I'm joined by a host of the Morning Rush and the Trusting the Process podcast program director, ESPN Arkansas. That is the one, Ty Richardson. Ty, how you doing, buddy? RJ, I'm great, man. I know we've talked over the phone uh, since you got the job with Fox Sports, but man, I just want to congratulate you I, again. I, I watched the video of you telling all your subscribers now up to over sixty seven thousand. It's freaking awesome, man! And just the emotion that you had at the end of the video just it, it tugged at my heart a little bit. So I, I'm so pumped for you, man, and uh, happy to be talking a little uh, Arkansas, Arkansas State with you this afternoon. I appreciate that, and I'm glad that we are talking about Arkansas, Arkansas State, because I'm, I've decided I'm fired up. I've decided I'm fired up about this game. I'm fired up about this game because I know the history of Arkansas scheduling and Arkansas scheduling in-state, and I think that you know, some of this is interesting because one of the things that I have been cautioned about was, hey, look— you're a national guy now, so you don't have to give everybody your attention. You don't have to talk to everybody. Everybody's trying to use you to get something or get over on somebody else, to use a, a wrestling term. And that is how Arkansas traditionally has viewed scheduling, not just Arkansas State, but anybody else in the state of Arkansas. Now, I want to get your thoughts on this because you, now you know where I stand and you know why I believe what I believe. And we can keep unpacking this, but like, when I reached out to you, you weren't necessarily a fan of it. Why weren't you a fan of it? RJ, what I always point to when it comes to Razorback football hmm. and the Arkansas Athletics Department, now I'm not adamantly against I'm not going to continue to moan, scream, and yell at Hunter Yurchak, the athletics director at the University of Arkansas. But the question that I have consistently asked when it comes to the Arkansas-Arkansas State game is how does this benefit the Arkansas football program? Not the fan bases, not the people of Arkansas, not Arkansas State, not War Memorial Stadium. How does it benefit the Arkansas football program? And to me, RJ, and again, this is a subjective, this is not an objective opinion. There's a lot of people that disagree with me, which is fine. I find more benefits helping out Arkansas State in this matter. And I, I see less pros for the Arkansas football program and the Arkansas athletic department than I think people associate with playing this game. So this game is going to take place at War Memorial Stadium, as Ty just pointed out, and it's going to it's not taking place until 2025. So there's a lot that's yeah. going to happen between now and then. I mean, Blake Anderson really did a great job while he was head coach for the Red Wolves, and now Butch Jones comes in there, and he's got a pretty outstanding coordinator and, and quarterbacks coach in Keith Heckendorf that I really love. Keith Heckendorf was actually the first guy to tell Justin Fields, his dad, straight up, he's the best player in the country. And don't any, let anybody tell you differently. And Justin was just 15 oh, wow. at the time. Yeah. So really solid when it comes to fat talent evaluation, that dude. And it's one of those stories that Justin's dad told me that he still holds dear. And to show you what kind of guy he is, they still chat every now and again about nothing at all. But I look at this and say – Okay, cool. Arkansas is going to give some shine to Arkansas State. Okay? UAA State. I get it. It's like Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Does Oklahoma lose anything from that game? No. It's been lopsided forever. Like, what I think is remarkable about Arkansas Arkansas State is that Arkansas State's been playing football since 1911, right? Mm -hmm. And Arkansas has been playing football, correct me if I'm wrong, 1894. Correct. Okay. They never played? Like, that's crazy to me and and not with one time. yeah well but Arkansas and Oklahoma are not that dissimilar right they're the pro team o, OU is the pro team and yet yeah it didn't ever make any sense for first John Barnhill right and I think 1946 and then later coach Broyles specifically when he became athletic director I'm not doing it because I don't feel like we got enough money to share with anybody else and I'm going well you got you have Arkansas, you have Arkansas State, you have Central uh, Central Arkansas, you have Arkansas Tech. I mean, we can keep going here. So, like, why, why do you think that not being a good big brother is beneficial to Arkansas? First off, I remember us having the conversation off-air last oh, yeah, time yeah, about 100%. Kind of the Oklahoma State, Oklahoma connection. And, and I would equate Arkansas State more to a Tulsa because Oklahoma State's played in the same conference. Big 12, Big 8, they've been 
while not on the same level nationally as Oklahoma, they still are on the same level competitively in that area. And I know Oklahoma is just beating their brains out for however many decades. I don't know what I, the, this series history is lopsided. I, I couldn't tell you it off the top of my head. But Arkansas State was at one point a, I think, Division two football program. Right. Been the Sun Belt for a while. So to me, I, I think the better comparison, RJ, is, is Tulsa, Oklahoma. But to your point about John Barnhill and Frank Broyles, Broyles always said that he didn't want people to give Arkansans a reason to cheer against Arkansas. Mm. And that's why they didn't play in-state schools, not just Arkansas, but other in-state schools unless they met in postseason competition. Well, this game, as in some of the other games, not just this game, that uh, Hunter Yurchek allowed this past season for baseball and other sports to open up, just not football, this game now allows fans to be on one side within the state of Arkansas, mm. which you can argue is good, can be bad, it's fun, competitive and stuff. And from a financial standpoint, it keeps the money in state. I get that. But I think the whole Frank Broyles and you mentioned John Barnhill as well, they just they never wanted to see this come to fruition. And I think that this is this is something that will be debated not just leading up to the game in two thousand twenty five, but years after to see if it does have an effect. Because Arkansas baseball got beat pretty handily by Euler, Arkansas Little Rock this past season. It or two yeah, this past season it didn't affect and it was two years ago, excuse me, and didn't affect them. That team ended up going to the College World Series. But the baseball program is far and away past where the football program is right now. I don't know if it's going to be a massive negative impact on Arkansas, but we'll just have to wait and see. I, I, th- I think there are some good reasons that this game wasn't played for a number of 50 years. Travel, um, variety of other things. But it, it's just going to have to be a wait and see for me, RJ. So who stands to actually, uh, you know, benefit from Arkansas playing Texas? It's a good question. Uh, so Arkansas fans, RJ, have this uh, inferiority complex when it comes to Texas. They hate that school. Not not necessarily the state. Now there's, I want to say, 60% of Arkansas students are from the state of Texas. It seems like all my friends either live in Dallas or from the Dallas area. It's wild how many Razorback alums make their way to Dallas, Texas. And so you have a lot of mixing and matching on campus, and that translates to people staying in Arkansas, saying it's it's a beautiful state, it's a beautiful uh, place to grow up, and I've really enjoyed being here for quite some time. Texas has less to gain than Arkansas has to gain when it comes to this game this fall in Donald W. Reynolds Razorback Stadium. And that's one of the reasons, RJ, that this game is not scheduled every single year. I know that Texas Athletic Director Chris Delacante said that they want to compete against teams in non-conference that would put them in national championship contention. Well, let's hold the phones, Chris, because you guys have not been anywhere near that. Oh, 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 hold on. Hold on. Hold on. His point is valid, though. They've been closer than Arkansas. That Listen, you're 100% right. And since... It hasn't – not a lot of good things have happened since 2011 for Arkansas football. I know you're a big Sam Pittman fan, so hopefully things will go in the right direction. But to your, that, that's why this game hasn't been scheduled again. The only reason it's being played this upcoming season is because it was supposed to be played – let's see, that would have been – it was supposed to be played in, in 2009, mm. but it got pushed back, to, and then it got pushed back again. That's why it's not going to continue to be played after this season unless just something crazy happens. Well, I mean, that happened with Oklahoma and LSU, right? LSU opted to put Texas on the schedule. That ended up being great for them, right? Because they got tested. They got a W. People respect Texas even when they shouldn't. And they rode that to 15-0 and in a national championship. But the reason I ask who stands to benefit from that game is both of y'all stand to benefit, of that, uh, benefit from that game. Because as you just mentioned, there's a lot of Arkansans that live in Texas, right? And there's a lot of... Texans that will find their way to Arkansas. I submit to the idea of game theory, one, because it's easy for me to make an analogy because people saw a beautiful mind, but also math, right? When you're more inclusive, when you have more people at the table, everybody makes more money. That's that's a fact. That's why diversity and inclusion should be an economic argument as opposed to a moral argument, right? You're going to make more. 
I think with Arkansas and Arkansas State, you have an opportunity to keep more money in the state, as you mentioned, but also you have an opportunity to grow Arkansas State into a formidable force for Arkansas. Like if that was, if that game was Texas, Texas A&M and Texas and Texas A&M were good, everybody would look forward to that game and it would be nationally marked on the calendar. But this idea of holding what you got, I also think harkens back to a day that is separate but equal, right? Because like Arkansas, we're, we got what we got. Arkansas State, y'all got what y'all got. We don't want to mix. We don't want to intermingle. That's bad. And we got lots of data to show that that's not. Like I told you, like when we were talking about this uh, in text, that you asked me, what do I think? And I went to write down my thoughts and I wrote down like 1,500 words. And obviously I get all the way into separate but equal, <laughs> right? So like that was why I wanted to talk with you about this. And, and Ty was a trooper, yeah. dude. He's like, yeah, let's, let's go. But I don't understand, at least in this day and age where we have all this data, why Arkansas feels a need to protect something, especially at a time when you want people watching Arkansas football, right? Like the idea that, that Coach Broyles was, was walking out there. Frank, y'all won one national championship, one, and, and it ain't won none since, okay? You need people watching Arkansas football, and if that means bringing in another team that you know is going to get watched by your locals, why not, dog? Like, why, 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 I, I, yeah, I, I can't get past that. I can't get past this okay. idea that, that you're limiting yourself by saying we're just not going to skip. Like, he did this with Tulsa. Like, you brought up the, the OU Tulsa uh, analogy, and I think that, that that comparison is actually really good. I would put it this way Coach Broyles is also the, same, the person that said Arkansas is never going to travel to Tulsa, right? Is this real class place of, we're only going to travel to teams that we think we're equal with or better than us, right? We're not actually going to, like, we talk about this. How many Arkansas, uh, Arkansas graduates live in Tulsa, right? Like, I can do it. Yeah, right. Good chunk. Just a tremendous including chunk. My, including my, uh, my stepsister and brother-in-law that I was supposed to go see this weekend and see the, the nephew hoop this weekend, RJ. Oh, man. And, and, like, you and I were supposed to be having lunch in December. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, all of that got thrown out the window. But no, that's that's my point, right? Wouldn't you want an opportunity yeah. to to get those home and homes and and to know that nobody's dodging competition? But it's also part of like, and I want to I want to take this out of Arkansas. I don't want to put this in front of of just Coach Broyles, though he is he is the front of it. Around the country, people are scared, right? I want a playoff to be expanded because I don't want anybody to be able to run from anybody else. Right, I love the idea of an undefeated group of five teams showing up to Alabama to get housed, because I want them to have a chance to prove they're not as good. Right, I come from a, from yeah. the state of no, I'm a group of five program. Like the idea that I was going to be at Fox never crossed my mind. Period. I was a little guy who wanted to talk about college football and talk about it incessantly, and the idea that there are no more little guys or that that that's just a one-off, really doesn't make me feel good, right? I think that an egalitarian form of, hey, are you good? Cool. Then we're going to give you our attention. If you're bad, cool. You get weeded out. Why, why is that idea not front and center at Arkansas? I think one of the things that worries some people, and I don't know how many it is, is you, you brought up, again, the, the Oklahoma – Oklahoma State comparison, and mm -hmm. Arkansas, Texas. I think there's some people in the back of their head, and I, I don't know how valid of a reasoning this is, is that Arkansas State could eventually become a, a good program. And what happens if they start nabbing a kid or two inside of Arkansas that the Razorbacks wanted and offered and weren't able to get? Now, there was – I, I want to say the recruiting uh, we have on Richard Davenport every single week, RJ. And of all the years that he's been covering recruiting, he could only recall one player that chose Arkansas State over Arkansas. Mm. I want to say it was the running back out of Osceola. Mm. And, and I don't, again, I don't know if this could actually happen, but if Arkansas State did win the football game in 2025, and I don't know where the Arkansas football program, what, what it's going to be looking right like. And now, then you just put in the, the back of a kid's head who was, 100% going to Arkansas. Maybe maybe Arkansas State has something going on. Arkansas, RJ, is the worst, least fertile recruiting ground 
in the Southeastern Conference. They do not – like Little Rock for – as many great basketball players come out of Little Rock, uh, Little Rock has to improve its high school football. And it's, it's getting better. There, there are certain people that – certain coaches that are down there, they're starting to put more football influence in high schools and renovate facilities and stuff like that. But even – like if Oklahoma loses a kid to Oklahoma State, I don't know which one – who would go to Tulsa over Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Let's say it happened. It's not that big of a deal. Oklahoma's a national brand. They can get – Guys like Ohio State, Clemson, Alabama, they have that type of superiority. Arkansas doesn't have that. And so when you're recruiting in-state in Arkansas, you have to have every advantage. And you mentioned Broyles back in the day. And what you mentioned the national championship in 64. They got close in 65. They should beat Texas in 69. Uh, 70, what's that, is 78 beat Oklahoma the Orange. They had other years where they were really close by a game or two, and they just fell short. Arkansas, one point, I know it's hard for a lot of your listeners and uh, and watchers to grasp, was a blue blood in college football. Now that died away. Uh, I don't. At some point in the '80s, I'd say maybe late '80s, they won two Southwest Conference championships before they they ventured off to the SEC. And that m- mentality, that mindset, used to be okay because Arkansas could say that because they were in the same breath as as a Texas or USC or some of the other blue bloods that we know today, even though those two individually have been where they were. I don't necessarily, I, I can't rip Royals for that. Cause even Ken Hatfield said that like, what does Arkansas have the Lake? And not, I got the Lake Ken Apple cheese. Ken Apple is very much still alive. <laughs> uh, we, we had him on the show a couple months ago. Um, he, he was at Arkansas just doesn't. And, and that's where I, I, I come to. And you mentioned the, that everyone benefits. Arkansas State and the state and the fans and more, more, a lot of them benefit. I just can't, I can't picture and fathom this Arkansas football program and athletics is benefiting a lot by playing Arkansas State. Hey, man, I've been wrong before. Maybe it goes good for Arkansas. It's big and it helps this football program. It helps high school football. I just don't see it, man. And and I, again, I'm not going to rip Hunter Yurchek for making this decision. He's made a lot of great decisions in his early short tenure as the AD in Arkansas, that's just kind of where I am right now. Well, And I, I, I get not wanting to lose market share. I understand that argument at the highest level. To the, to the idea that you're going to lose recruits to Arkansas State, I would, I would say Arkansas State needs to prove that they're good first, and beating a good Arkansas is not the same as beating a mediocre Arkansas. And I use mediocre – in a positive sense for once, as opposed to being bad, because last year they yep. were, they I'd say they were pushing to good. They ended up mediocre, right? I mean, that Auburn game goes differently. We're probably talking about that season a little bit differently, but you mentioned about four other instances where if they get a game, we're talking about them being national champs versus just having a really great season. So I want to make that distinction. I also want to just drive home this idea that Arkansas is still the flagship program in, in the state, which means they're getting the most money from right. the state, right? Not to, to say nothing of what the Waltons do with their money, right? Like that's, <laughs> you're always going to be able to, to outspend in a state. But I also think that you're, you're getting to a point to where you're going to, you're going to push people away if, if you don't start inviting them in. And I think Hunter Yurichek saw that. And the reason I say that, year after next, Central Arkansas is a Sunbelt team, okay? That means you got two FBS Good football teams in your state. And my favorite part of this, the Sun Belt might be the sixth or even fifth best conference in the country, depending on who you want to talk to at any given time. Right? So Central Arkansas is also going to be there. If, is yeah. it, in the same way that Oklahoma State and Tulsa are there for Oklahoma. But Oklahoma was trash in the 90s. Well, I say 93 to basically 99. Right? Just awful. Tulsa could come in there, do something, right? Uh, Oklahoma State could come in there, do something. And yet, you bounce back because you're the flagship university. I just, I, I, yeah. I, I hope that more Arkansas fans come around to the idea of, no, 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 we want to be on the good side of this history when these teams do pop up and become pretty good. Because I, yeah. I like the Red Wolves. I, I, I like the Bears. I like what they're about. I like the Wonder Boys. Hell, like, Look at me. I'm I'm a natural Arkansas fan. Um, it's a, yeah. Oh man. It, it, I, don't, I want to say something real. Please, quick. please. Brought up a list. It, um, 
with Hunter Juracek, I think we need to talk about his background a little bit. Coastal Carolina, Houston, two of the smaller schools inside of Carolina and then Texas. And he has that background of being a uh, group of five AD, which is what Terry Mahajer was, mm-hmm. is now at UCF right. before taking that job. Danny White. And so, and yeah, so he, ha- he has that in his background, which I think is important when it came to this discussion and how it, tra- and, and how it transpired, RJ. No, and that's a very good point, and I'm glad you raised it. And, and I, I, again, I say that there are more group of five people than there are power five people. We all pick power five teams because they're on television or we were raised in those houses, right? Like if Tulsa was on television as much as Oklahoma, I would, I would ask the question, which team do you care about more, right? Because exposure is as big as anything else. And the exposure being on with Arkansas, say the local affiliate, but even the SEC network, uh, a cable television network is tremendous. Um, I got you here, so I'm going to ask you, what is Sam Pittman going to do in year two? I got asked that last night over a few cold brews. And, RJ, when you look at this football schedule in 2021, it wasn't going to be easy in 2020. Some would say uh, Hunter Yurchek and others described it as the toughest football schedule in college football history. And when you look at who they played, a 10-game SEC slate with the two Eastern opponents crossover uh, that were added to their schedule being Georgia and Florida, Mm. I don't know how far off he and so many others were in actually saying that when you look at the ranked teams they had to play. LSU played in Alabama, I think, last year. Didn't they play six ranked teams each? And I, th- I think that's what Arkansas ended up with in the regular season. Am, am I right on that, RJ? I have to go check, but I think you are uh, because I, I counted up at the end because I was looking at LSU schedule going, y'all suck. And then I was, I was also going, oh, yeah, the SEC is still very good. And remember last year we were talking about this, and I was going, Arkansas wins a game, be happy. And they won four? Uh, th- three and seven. Like I said, four. Um, Auburn. I'm, I'm giving him the Auburn game. How about that? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but, like, you're on to it, right? Like, the crossover matchup really sucked. So much so that <laughs> little birdie told me there was an Arkansas coach that uh, wasn't very happy about the new SEC schedule when it popped up. Oh, oh yeah. Pittman was pissed. He's valid <laughs> in his anger. But, I mean... RJ, it doesn't get much easier this year. We mentioned the Texas game. They're coming week two. I don't know how geared up Sark's going to be. I know we got to see it. You know the quarterback that we'll see in 2021 for the lot. We watched a little bit. Can I can I jump in there with some details to help you with that? Just real quick. Go ahead. Uh, News of his contract just dropped this afternoon. Thirty four point two million dollars Saturday afternoon when we're when we're talking. Yeah. So five point two to start, six point two to end. But here's the the real one is. Pete Kwiatkowski is defensive coordinator is making 1.7 annual. Okay? I think that was a shot at, at your man, Barry Odom. That's what I think. I also thought it was interesting that Jeff Banks, special teams coordinator, making a million dollars. Steve Spurrier was the first millionaire head coach in 96. Okay? We got a special teams coordinator at Texas making a million dollars in 21. And I think it's going to be Casey Thompson, but there are folks that still believe that Hudson Carr could be the guy. All right. I just wanted to, they got to win. They, they can't lose to Arkansas, I guess is my point. I, I hope they do. And, you know, <laughs> I, I don't anticipate it. By the way, since you're on the, the subject of you guys getting paid, can you, and this is it's got some Arkansas ties, can sure. you tell me the first uh, coordinator, million-dollar coordinator in college football? The answer might surprise you a little bit. First million-dollar coordinator in college football. Million-dollar coordinator. No, go, go ahead, tell me. Mr. Chad Morris at Clemson. I was You know that shocked. makes no that makes all the sense in the world though that now that you said it. Because I know I remember at the time they were doing something and Dabo said, rather than give me a raise, defer my raise and pay my assistance. Because that's how I'm gonna keep him here. Okay. Like, I, I knew I, that I, I knew that half of it, but I didn't know that Chad Morris was the first millionaire coordinator. Like, like what? Man. Yeah, you you guys are so <laughs> God, oh, you guys got the worst version of Chad Morris. Uh, and we had you no. Know, it's funny. It's funny, and I, I I will come back to the schedule real quick. But real, I remember having a conversation with Taj Boyd. Got connected with him and loved loved watching Taj in college. He was my favorite quarterback to play on NCAA football back in the day. 
And he was so bought in that Chad Morris was going to change this football program. Had me believe in, had our listeners believe in, and it just didn't happen. So that, that to me, I don't want to get too much on the rabbit trail, but I just I, I can harken back to that conversation. But, RJ, on the, on the subject of this season, Texas week two, mm. you got to play Georgia again, and we'll see what happens with JT Daniels. That one's in okay. Athens. Yeah, that one's in yeah, Athens. That, that's not – and I, Arkansas, uh, they they held their own for 38 minutes in this past season, but uh, watch out for Kirby Smart's team uh, first weekend of October. That's going to be quite fun. George Pickens could be one of the best – one of the best wide receivers. I say, I say one of the best because he's not better than Traylon Burks, and I think – I hope you think that too, but – it's not like going to Ole Miss after what you did to him last year. Lane Kiffin's going to have his boys fired up. You get, you go to LSU, you go to Alabama. I would think that LSU, I mean, they're not going to have the season they had two seasons ago, but they're definitely going to bounce back from last year. Plus, you can't ever find a way to beat that terrible school in College Station, Texas, no matter the talent differential and disparity. It always seems to be a close game, except. Uh, this past season and the, the Trevor Knight game where he just went off in the fourth quarter. So it's not going to be easy for Arkansas. And to be honest, this is a statement that I hate saying. They're going to be lucky to make a bowl game. They are going to be lucky to – I think they win those three non-conference games relatively easily. I think they're going to lose a close game to Texas. But, RJ, when you look at that football schedule, it, it's not easy to find three SEC wins. It, it's going to be a tough road for Sam Pittman in year two. I think there's a lot of the ceiling – for this team is higher than a lot of people think based on the talent they have coming back and the experience. But just the schedule, I mean, it's the SEC, man, plus Texas. That ain't easy for anybody. Well, I'm looking at the schedule, right? And that Georgia Southern game, I think, is going to be way tougher than, than Arkansas fans even realize. And that's because I, I think that Georgia Southern is one of the four best teams in that conference, the Sun Belt, right? Uh, and Arkansas State's going to be – a little bit down, but not a whole lot down. Uh, I think losing Jonathan Adams is really big there, but that's Arkansas State. All right, so I'm looking at the schedule. At Georgia, you're at Ole Miss. They're going to be decent to good. Auburn is a win. Year one, they'll be talented, but year two, especially after what Barry Odom proved you could do, was putting Dwan Mathis on the bench, right, uh, in that first game. Mississippi State is a game you can win. UAB is a game, uh, UAPB is a game you can win. I mean, LSU... Yeah, okay. They may have more talent than you, but they're also going to be having they're going to have two first-year coordinators. Alabama, sorry about that. That's a loss. Uh Missouri, you ought to be able to win that game. That's a game you're in. They they lost their defense coordinator. They're adding Ryan Walters, who I really enjoy. I think it's going to be good. Uh or excuse me, Ryan Walters went to Illinois. Steve Wilkes is at Missouri now. Uh another man I think is good. Probably never coaches the NFL ever again. So I I could see five wins in there. Yeah, getting the bowl eligibility, you're going to have to get lucky. But uh, the, as you pointed out. Those academics up, buddy. That's what they needed. Man, look, like as you pointed, A&M could win 10 games. Georgia I have in the national championship against Oklahoma. Uh, oh, Ole Miss, wow. Oh, yeah. No, I the, – the running joke in our circles of college football is, of course you pick Georgia every year, and of course they let you down every year because they lose to South Carolina or whomever, right? to put themselves out of the SEC championship game, or they're just not as good as an LSU or an Alabama in a year where they're fully loaded for bear. This is the window for, for Georgia for me, just as it's the window for Oklahoma for me. But Ole Miss is going to – they're going to move the football. Like, the, the part about that that sucks is if Jeff Levy got that job and not Gus Malzahn, I would feel way better about Arkansas in that game against Ole Miss – but because that offense is so good at moving the football, I mean, you put up 647 yards and 47 points on Alabama in a year where they go 13-0, and 0, yeah, you're, you're going to be pretty good. So I, I hear you. But I also think this is, this is uh, food for thought down the line. Arkansas could do with the addition of two more teams or the reduction of two more teams from that conference. I don't think that Arkansas wants to go anywhere. I don't want to say that because I, I don't think that's true. And I don't think that anybody wants to kick Arkansas out. I don't think that's true. I do think that that West is loaded and the East is too loaded, right? It's loaded enough where Georgia, Florida, Missouri in some years, right? South Carolina in some years are going to give you a headache. But, like, find me another conference where you can bet on 10 of the 14 teams being a bowl eligible, right? It's hard. 
and, and one of those isn't Arkansas? Wait a second. All right. So that's why I asked, what's Sam Pittman going to do in year two? But also, who's the quarterback, man? Is it Malik? Is it KJ? Because, like, if the, if the offense clicks and Burks proves to be that dude that you think he is, I mean, we know that Odom's got the defense to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a question that we've we've already had discussions about, and we're I mean, how far are we out until the first week in September? I don't I can't tell you the dates off the top of my head, but Malik Hornsby was flying up the two four seven recruiting rankings, and we've we've talked to uh, Steve Wiltfong, and we talked to uh, the guy that's now at Vanderbilt, that whose name is uh, uh, Barton Simmons. Barton Simmons, yeah. yeah. Uh, we talked to both those guys, and they love him. They love him, so Malik Hornsby. I think, I mean, Malik, you talk to players in practice, and he can just scoot, man. He's got the wheels. Now, Bryles said his head was spinning a little bit with all they were adding to his brain, just getting him ready. You look at what K.J. did against Missouri. Missouri had a pretty good defense this past year, right? And K.J. put up 48, if I remember that right. And I know they were preparing for Felipe up to game time, and then all of a sudden we get the announcement, oh, Felipe was going through warm-ups as gamemanship because he hasn't he can't throw the football. So you're going to be getting playing K.J. Jefferson. And to his credit, K.J. was really, really good in this game. That's the best the offense looked. But I think this competition, R.J., is going to be more unpredictable than people think. I think the majority of fans, if you ask an Arkansas fan right now, they would tell you, K.J. Jefferson is going to be our starting quarterback. you got to remember, Ken O'Briles has been recruiting Malik Hornsby since he was a freshman in high school. He has known about this kid for quite some time. And Arkansas, Mike, and think about this. This is just so refreshing to me. Arkansas hasn't had a dual-threat quarterback, like a true dual-threat guy, since Matt Jones. Now one of their starters, whoever is, and it's, it's Malik and K.J. Unless there's an injury, it's Malik and K.J. They're both dual threat guys, and that is just so. And I don't like Felipe could run last year, but he wasn't a wheels dude, and he he made some really good read option plays and tucked it and made some right uh, reads there. But I, I'm just excited for the explosion I think we're going to see from this Arkansas offense in year two with the full spring practice with these drills that they get to, getting to actually work with the quarterbacks on the field. This is going to be a fun football team offensively to watch in 2021 and I, I i can't give you a solid answer on who's the quarterback gonna be if i had to lean one way i'd probably say kj but i'm not one of those guys that assume kj is gonna be the starter since day one it, it, it's just kind of a wait and see for me rj that is ty richardson program director at espn arkansas host of the morning rust and trust process podcast Give him a follow on the Twitters. I'm going to link him in the description below. I'm also going to link to ESPN Arkansas in the description below where you can find this man because if it if you need to know about Arkansas at any point in time, football, basketball, baseball, Ty is the man. I'm just the dude that consumes Arkansas football, and I got you know a real soft spot for Sam Pittman. One day I'm going to get out to that lakefront property. I'm going to see what's really good. But, hey, Ty, I asked you for 15 minutes. You gave me like 34 <laughs> You're awesome, man. I love you. I, it's, and that's probably just a byproduct of me talking too much. And I appreciate the kind words, buddy. It's funny to me how whenever I'm going through message boards, Arkansas with its hog bill, hog beat, hog sports, whole hog sports, the different uh, Arkansas conversation pools that we have. Anytime my boy RJ makes a video about Arkansas, you just have all these people come in. Look at our boy RJ. Look how much he loves that, like all all this stuff. Because there's not a lot of national people, and you're very much so a national commentator for Fox Sports now, which is again freaking awesome, man. That give Arkansas love. Now, now they do it in baseball. They they they've been doing it in basketball because of us and the seven game SEC winning streak. Football team hasn't really gotten any, and so for you to be able to do that and being so close in Tulsa where you are. A lot of Arkansas fans are really appreciative of you, man. And the videos, guys, I, I know all you watching, some of you are just watching because I'm on it now. The majority of you are watching. RJ's videos, if you like college football, this is the place to be. Plus, he's funny, too. So <laughs> I, I'd encourage all of you that aren't subscribed. you, you got to subscribe to this dude. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate you.